If you don't have a lot of access to native English speakers or even just advanced speakers, then I urge you, when you are able to speak with him, don't ask about grammar rules. Don't ask about the past tense, progressive tense. Hello, I am live. This is another unscheduled live. Let's see if anybody pops up. My time is Saturday midday. Hello, hello, welcome. This is a surprise live. <laughs> hello, hello. All right, I'll wait just a few moments for people to join. And I want to share some of my thoughts with you. I was thinking earlier about how people... They will say to me as an English teacher that they're disappointed or sometimes uh, they complain that they don't have access to speak English or speak with the native English speaker. And I have some thoughts on that and I wanted to share with you. Let's see, Sengiz Bozkurt says, hi, how are you? Hello, I'm doing well. Sweetie Just Live says, thanks a bunch. All right. KJ1989, oh, I was thinking about your live that it happened. <laughs> Well, I am live, and this is unscripted. Unscripted. Can anyone tell me what the word unscripted means? The word is unscripted. Hmm, what does the word unscripted mean? Hello, Leila Akhakani. Hello, Ferhat. Hello. Can anyone tell me what the word unscripted means. So if, if I say that this live right now is unscripted, what does the word unscripted mean? Hello, hello. Hello, lots of waves. All right, Sweet Just Live says it's odd. Hmm, unscripted. It could be odd or it could be good. Hmm. Unscripted. What does the word unscripted? Aha, Mahir Moon says means unwritten. All right. So if I say something is unscripted, or if someone tells you that, okay, this meeting or this presentation is unscripted, it means it's not planned. It's just impromptu. It's like we have the idea, boom, let's do it. We're not going to take a whole bunch. Let's see, KJ 1989, unscripted, not clear. It's possible. Usually unscripted, unscripted just means not planned, unplanned. It's spur of the moment, at moments, moments notice. We're doing it just now, right? Okay, so we have a few people. And the reason I did this live today, and thank you very much for coming in, I appreciate it. Um, the idea of this unscripted live is that I wanted to share some of my thoughts with you because I've heard my students saying and followers saying that sometimes they're frustrated that they're not able to speak with native English speakers or that they're not able to speak English a lot with other English speakers, right? So um, I'd like to give you my thoughts <laughs> and you can take it as you will. These are my opinions. I urge you to take in the information let the information bounce in your head and you de you decide if you want to agree with me or disagree with me. That's up to you. Okay, so let's see. Sometimes people complain that they don't have access to native speakers. And I understand if you're in a country where there's not a lot of people who speak English or a place where not very many people do. So here is my advice. In those moments, maybe the small moments, like when we're doing lives, or you meet a, an American tourist or a British tourist, or someone who speaks English, I urge you to use them for their expertise. Use them for what they're experts in. All right, so a native English speaker is an expert in English communication, <laughs> talking, vocabulary, expressions. Does this sound right? Does this sound wrong, right? I, I think it's not a good idea when you have a small amount of time with a native English speaker to ask them grammar rules. 
I know you're very focused on grammar rules and grammar rules are important. And I say, great, study them. <laughs> However, when you have a small amount of time to speak with a native English speaker, someone who's very fluent or maybe very advanced in English, I don't think it's a good idea to ask them about verb tenses, <laughs> past tense, future tense, nouns, pronouns, stuff like that. I urge you to talk. Just talk with them, right? Um, I heard this word. What does it mean? If I say this, is it right? Where are you from? The trick, <clears throat> the interesting thing that I think sometimes people don't realize is that when we have conversation right now, we're doing grammar. So what is grammar? A very simple definition of grammar is you're learning how to put words together. The right order, right? Words and phrases, how do we make conversation? Because that's the purpose, right? Is to able be able to communicate. So when we study grammar, the purpose is to learn how to put the language together, right? So who is an expert? <laughs> who has many years of experience using English? Native English speakers. So when you're able to speak with a native English speaker, use them. <laughs> use them for their English. See, I'm 38 years old. So I've been speaking since, what, I was two years old? So I've been speaking native English for about 36 years, right? I've only started studying grammar rules for the last, what, five or six, about six years, maybe seven years? So if you're able to meet with an English speaker, I'm an English teacher, so I've studied grammar rules and stuff like that, but if you just meet like a regular native English speaker, they're probably not very focused on grammar. <laughs> if I came up to you in whatever language you speak, Arabic, Farsi, Spanish, German, Hindi, whatever, and I said to you, can you please explain the past tense <laughs> in Hindi, the, the present progressive in Farsi, can you please explain the, the tense? It's possible that you can explain it to me, but you might be thinking, if you want to learn Farsi, wouldn't it be better to just use my expertise and talk? <laughs> because when we talk, we learn grammar. You learn how to put the words together. And when I'm talking to you right now, if I say the cow is red or the cow is huge, you just learned, you heard me say, I didn't say the red cow is, <laughs> I said the cow is, the cow is red. I didn't say the red cow is. So just by listening, and I urge you watch YouTube videos, watch movies, stuff in English, the grammar goes into your head because you're, you're learning how it's spoken. Okay, so I'm talking a lot, but I'll give you a couple points. If you're not able to speak with native English speakers a lot or advanced speakers, I urge you when you have the opportunity not to ask about grammar rules. Don't ask about past tense, first tense, all that stuff. Use them for conversation. All right, KJ1989 says, but most of the time my native guys don't mention my grammatically wrongs to me. Okay. I, well, that's up to you. If you want someone to correct you, you could ask them and say, you know, did I say it correctly? Did I say it incorrectly? I would appreciate you appreciate it if you would correct me. Don't worry about offending me. I'm trying to improve my English. When I was learning Spanish, and I'm at an advanced level of Spanish, but you're, we're always learning, right? I can say I'm still learning English because there are incredible number of amount of words and vocabulary and rules in English that I'm still learning. As I progress in in uh, Spanish, in Indonesian, in American Sign Language, in Chinese, I need to keep reminding myself that it's okay to make mistakes. We have to make mistakes. If we automatically spoke perfect, perfectly all the time, well, first it would be kind of boring because we don't need to improve anymore. And it's impossible, right? Perfection doesn't exist. <laughs> but what does exist is improvement. We can always improve. 
So I like to tell my students, try to learn English or Spanish or Hindi or Russian or whatever you're learning. Try to learn that language as if you were a child. Because a child, they don't care about making mistakes. And they have confidence. And they just blah. They just say whatever comes to mind. And look how fast children improve. Right? So fast. <laughs> Let's see. Al Afian Hasibuan. Sometimes I feel confused. <coughs> Excuse me. Something. I feel confused when I use to be. Sure. The verb to, to be is kind of irregular. Right? So like. I was happy, I am happy, I will be happy. I would urge you, you probably have some ability to use to be. And even if it's incorrect, just start talking. Just start talking. You'll build up your confidence. You'll improve much, much more quickly. And you'll feel better <laughs> about yourself. Is it uncomfortable? Yes. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, when I was, let's see, when I first started studying Spanish and I moved down to South America to live and study, you start thinking, hmm, <laughs> am I making a mistake? Do I look silly? If I say this word in the wrong tense, are they just going to not want to talk with me? I agree. I think that most people, if you're fun and you smile and you have a good time, people will want to interact with you. Okay, HTC Ursi says, I advise people who want to learn English who want to learn English to memorize words. Am I correct? I say it's all right. There's a I would say memorize is step 1, right? What do you think is step 2? Because we can memorize stuff. I can put a lot of information in my head, but if I only memorize it, it it stops, right? It's like you buy a car, a beautiful new car, but then you just leave it at home. You leave it in your garage, right? The purpose of a beautiful car is probably to drive it around and maybe go far, go on trips, use it, right? So I think it's great to memorize vocabulary, but we need to remember step two. Use the vocabulary, right? All right. Does anybody have any other thoughts, questions? Let's see. Alfian Hasibuan says, and sometimes... I I confused about the spelling word to type to others, and I decided to open the dictionary first. Okay, that's all right. That's no problem. Yeah, you use what tools you have, right? It's not a perfect journey, and we learn which tools are best for us, right? All right. If you guys have any thoughts about what I'm talking about, and for people that just joined, I'm going to summarize just say in a few words what I'm trying to communicate to you guys. If you don't have a lot of access to native English speakers or even just advanced speakers, then I urge you when you are able to speak with them, don't ask about grammar rules. Don't ask about the past tense, progressive tense, adjectives, verbs. Use native speakers or advanced speakers for their ability to use the language, conversation, vocabulary. Does this sound right? Can I say it this way? What happens if I do this? All right, we have another comment. Let's see. Sweetie Justice Live says, your lessons are very useful. Great. KJ 1989, that's why I'm worried about myself as I'm ta talking to other guys. And I'm not enough confident to make a conversation. I can often say what I mean, but I'm scared of having a grammatical mistake. Right. Right. So let me see. You scrolled up. So KJ 1989, I think a lot of people are in your situation. When I'm speaking Indonesian with people about very serious topics, like business stuff, money stuff, it's serious, right? I start getting nervous. Am I saying the right word? Am I making the right impression? Do people understand what I'm saying? And I urge you this. Be bold. <laughs> be bold. Can anyone tell me what the word bold means? B-O-L-D. What does the word bold mean? Can someone tell me what the word bold means? So I'm urging all of you 
When you want to speak English and you're a little bit nervous, you're thinking, oh, my grammar's not right, I urge you to be bold. So what does the word bold mean? Ah, brave. All right, let's see. Uh, Sue Kaur says brave. Carissa Fela says botak. Okay. Nina 772 says brave. All right. Ambitious 222 says brave. Sue Kaur says strong. Right. If you're bold, it means you have courage. You're daring. You're brave. You're willing to move forward. The number one meaning, the idea, is that if someone is bold, do they sit at home (laughs) on the couch and do nothing? No, they take action. (laughs) They move forward. So if you hear the words bold, daring, uh, let's see, strong, moving forward, they take action. A little bit of action, maybe but at least some action. And if you start taking a little bit of action, you can take more action and more action and more action, right? And will it be perfect? Will you feel super comfortable the whole time? No, (laughs) but that's life. And the people who really become successful are willing to feel uncomfortable and move forward. Be bold, right? All right, let's see, I'm gonna scroll back through to make sure I don't miss your questions. Give me a sec. All right, Teaching English page says, Hi, dear master. Master? Like Kung Fu? (laughs) All right, how can we get the records live videos? Okay, so the live videos that I make, I almost always, unless it's just a camera test or something, I put it in... I put it in my stories or so you guys can see it after 24 hours. And I'm also working on downloading them and then uploading them to my YouTube channel. So yesterday when I did the the live and I was trying asking you guys to try the Zoom app and some of you did, great. I'm going to upload that to YouTube and you can watch. And I already put one live on YouTube uh, from a few days ago or last week. So... YouTube or Instagram, you can see my lives for 24 hours. Then after that, poof, (laughs) they're gone. But I will put as many lives as I can on my YouTube channel. If you go to my bio right now, there should be a highlight that says YouTube. Or uh, sometimes, I like today in my stories, I put a link to one of my YouTube video XLs. Great song with explanations. So, I will put my lives on YouTube. Okay, let's see. Other questions? All right. So, Ernie Menu says, What the import, important if I want to speak English? That's a very broad, open question. <laughs> I would say move forward. Use what tools you have. First, I would say you have to identify your goals. What is your goal? If your goal is to get a high score on the IELTS, then you need to study what's necessary to get a high score on the IELTS. If your goal is to move to an English-speaking country and be able to do things like go shopping, go to the bank, talk with your neighbors, talk with other kids, and communicate with native speakers, I would say focus on conversation, (laughs) vocabulary, phrases. You need to identify your goal. What do you need this language for? Because English is a tool, right? It's a tool. You can use English to improve your life. For me, Indonesian is a tool. Spanish is a tool. American Sign Language is a tool because they allow me to communicate and live in different parts of the world and talk with people in different languages. All right, let's scroll down. What other questions? Hello, how are you? Davud from Iran. All right, I'm great. Let's see. All right, Dim Dim Rich says, Is it important to learn grammar? In my school, I had bad score for English, LOL. So till now, I don't know what is grammar. Do you want to know a secret? (laughs) The except, let's see how I explain this the best. English teachers usually know grammar quite well especially if they're certified in, in TESOL, TEFL, CELTA, something like that. They have to do grammar. But the majority of native English speakers 
cannot explain grammar rules because they don't worry about them, right? They just talk. <laughs> they know it's right because it feels right. When you speak your language, uh, let's say you speak Arabic, right? Before you talk, do you think, okay, this adjective goes with this noun and I need to remember the past tense and the program? No, you just talk. You do it <laughs> because it feels right and you it just comes out. So the purpose, for, for example, for me, for Spanish now, I don't think about grammar. I don't translate in my head. I just talk. Empiezo a hablar en español y lo puedo hacer porque he practicado por muchos años y me gusta estudiar español y lo puedo hacer. Estoy aquí con ustedes y puedo, podemos hablar en diferentes idiomas y todo eso. <laughs> so it, it's just the point, the purpose of language is to use it as a tool. And you have to identify your goal. What do you want to get out of it? So I'm going to try to answer your question. I'm sorry, I keep talking, getting distracted. Is it important to learn grammar? I would say at the beginning, when you're starting, when you're beginning, I say it's good to learn grammar because, especially the specific grammar rules, because it gives you structure. It gives you things that you can rely on, things that you can, like tools that you can put into place. If you can already speak English quite well and you're able to communicate and you're worried about going back to study grammar, the specific grammar rules again, that's your choice. You can also learn grammar, the correct way to say things, just by having conversations. So I would urge you, if you want to become an English teacher, it's probably good to learn grammar rules. If you need to learn English for your job, for communicating people with people, let's say you're a lawyer and you need to and you're from Spain and you need to talk to your client who speaks only English, I would learn vocabulary in the law that you're kind of you're studying, the vocabulary phrases. Stuff like that. So grammar, yes, I think it's important. Uh, it depends on where you're headed. I will still say this. If you don't have a lot of access to native English speakers, and then you meet one, don't ask grammar rules. <laughs> Use them for conversation. Ask questions like, can I say it this way? What does this word mean? If I put it here, will it make sense? Where are you from? Make conversation. Okay. All right, Alfian Hasibuan says, you know I'm Indonesian, and you are a great person. Thank you. I understand every word you said. I don't know why, because your pronunciation is good. All right. And I decide to, decide to keep watching and listening to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Botox is bald. <laughs> Let's see, Wayner's style, 06 says, Botox is bald. No, nope, not bald. I have hair. It's just really short. All right, okay. Okay, KJ1989 said, that's why I like you so much, especially your eye contact. Woo! <laughs> I feel you in a real conversation as I'm watching your Insta Live. Great, great. Thank you very much for your kind words. All right, and da -da -da -da. scrolling down. All right, Sweet Justice Live says, please, please work expressions more. All right. Carissa Fela says, I'm Chloe's friend. We met at Cynthia. All right. Let's see. Ambitious222. Which book is perfect in learning speaking skill? Well, my opinion. <laughs> you take it as you will. You don't have to accept my opinion. Just once again, the question is, which book is perfect in learning speaking skill? For speaking, I, I books... Uh, Okay, books are okay, you can see the conversation, you can read it, but for speaking, you need videos, you need stuff you can hear a native speaker talking. And YouTube, Instagram, <laughs> incredible. YouTube, if you want to improve your speaking in English, go to YouTube. It doesn't have to be a teaching channel, it could be. It could be a regular English movie. Play the movie, go to a part where they're having a dialogue, they're having conversation, listen to it, pause it, repeat it, and then stop it and say it. Repeat what they're saying. The shadowing, right? So if I say, the dog is red, pause it, repeat after me, the dog is red. So you have a lot of opportunities, free videos on YouTube. Use them and repeat what they say and try to change how you're saying it to copy what they say. 
and repeat as many times as you need, right? Um, I, I find that people really want to use books, books, books. I think books can serve a purpose. They're great for grammar, great for reading, great for comprehension, improving vocabulary. Speaking, I think there are better tools. YouTube, Instagram, social media, even if you're not able to speak directly with the native English speaker. Yes, use the tools. Okay. All right, let's see. KG1989 and Farsi is a tool. I agree. I can teach you Farsi and learn English from, <laughs> from you. <laughs> All right. Ovgun Music says it's good to see you. Likewise, I see a smiley face. HTC Ursi's. Native speakers don't learn their language, but they acquire it. So it is hard to explain grammar rules for natives. Ooh, yes, I agree. And it doesn't matter what language it is. You acquire it, right? You absorb it. It's part of your growing up. And so when you're growing up, back in school, in like third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, we studied grammar. We had tests. But... After you finish school, you don't use the specific grammar rules unless you become like an English teacher. But living life, business, dealing with people, money stuff, contracts, law, lawyers, engineer, all that stuff, you're not going to be breaking the sentence apart into the uh, subjunctive predicate and all that stuff. You're going to be talking, com communicating. Okay, so Max Foster so talk without concentrating on grammar. Now, this is the tricky thing is that when you talk, you are doing grammar because you're learning how the words fit together, especially if you have feedback, right? Um, what I'm trying to say is that if you only have a small amount of time with a native or advanced English speaker, automatically asking them to explain grammar rules I think is a waste of your time and probably a waste of their time because if you have a native English speaker, they are an expert at conversation, vocabulary, phrases. Does it sound right together? So use them for their expertise. All right. All right. Ambitious222 says, I need the book because most of them are attached with audio files and useful links. Okay. Um, I would use, do a Google search, and there are a lot of tools out there. A lot of tools. All right. Okay. So, Carissa Phyllis says, is this past tense? Right? Uh, swim, swam, drank, drank. Oop. Take look. So, I swam in the ocean. I drank tea with sugar. I took... Candy, or I took cookies from the cookie jar? Right. Okay. All right. So, yes. So I think I'm about at the end of the live right now because I need to get back to some of my stuff. So thank you very much for tuning in. I'm just going to repeat one more time before I finish. Oh, we have another question. I can answer. KJ1989, do you know anything about method of audio lingual to learn a language? I'm sorry if I'm asking too much. It's okay. You guys can ask. And if, if I can answer, I will. If I can't, then I can't. But it's okay to ask questions. Ask a lot of questions. Okay. Audio lingual. KJ1989 and everyone. One method that I really like, and I've used it for Chinese. I use it for Spanish. Chinese and Spanish with my daughter, and they have... I've, they have Korean, they have a whole bunch. Pimsler. I like how Pimsler does it. Do you guys know Pimsler? I'm going to type it in the comments so you guys can see how it's spelled. Pimsler. I think I spelled it right. Pimsler. We'll see. And they're audio, right? You listen to them. And the thing I like about Pimsler. Well, first, you have a native speaker, so you can hear the, their correct pronunciation, their intonation, and all that. But what they do is they feed you little by little, and they have you repeat out loud all the time after the native speaker. And then they, so they do one lesson, they teach you stuff, 
Then they do another lesson, and in the next lesson, they go back and they repeat some of the stuff in the first lesson. So they are constantly making you review. And I haven't studied, PIM, used the Pimsleur Chinese for a, quite a while, like six, seven months. But uh, I can remember. <laughs> It's, I like the Pimsleur method. For me, it makes it stick in my brain. All right. All right. Ambitious 222, talk to us one time about word stress. Well, hmm, the easiest, uh, I won't say easiest. I would say an effective way to do word stress is by listening, right? Uh, there are, oh, like, pronunciation. If you have access to Google, type in, like, dictionary meaning, or uh, let's say the word you want to know the stress on is, gee, what a word, uh, encyclopedia. <laughs> Go to Google, type in encyclopedia meaning, and when they give you the definition, there's a, a little... Uh, uh, no, uh, audio icon, and you can hear a native English speaker say it. And they will say it with the correct word stress, the correct intonation. So I think the best way to learn word stress is by mimicking, by copying, by imitating, right? You can look at a book, and they'll put a little mark pointing to where you need to put the word stress. And it, it sounds good. I mean, it looks good, but you don't hear it. If you hear it and then you practice it after it's being said. So a Google dictionary, just typing in the word and the meaning, uh, airplane meaning, uh, amazing meaning, whatever, and click on the audio icon. All right. Hattis Ercias says, I think we should be bold to speak a foreign language and improve our speaking without thinking grammar mistakes. That's the idea, right? Because I'm going to give you a secret. If you're learning a language, it's guaranteed you will make mistakes. And that's okay. <laughs> that's how we improve, right? Is it comfortable? Does it make us feel good to make mistakes? No. But we learn to move past that. And then after we make mistakes, it's less likely. Well, if we make mistakes and we realize or we learn to fix those mistakes, we probably don't make those mistakes anymore. We make new mistakes and more advanced mistakes, right? All right. Let's see. KJ1989, that's why I like Audiolingual. And maybe both of them are the same. I learned English at level of what I am now just in four months. Fabulous. <laughs> Great. Um, whatever you're studying, whether it's computers, engineering, a doctorate degree, English, there's one... Uh, something that's in common, whatever I've studied, whatever job I've done, and whatever, however we want to be a success, there's something in common. You get out of it what you put into it. What does that mean? If I say you get out of it what you put into it, what does that mean? Let's see. You get out of it what you put into it. Can someone tell me what that means? You get out of it what you put into it. So if if, I, if a student asks me, how much should I study English? I would say, you get out of it what you put into it. Can someone tell me what it means? You get out of it what you put into it. Another way to say it would be, you, yeah, yeah. you get out of it what you put into it. What do you think? Let's see. Maybe I'll save time. I don't see anybody answering. Your Sweet Justice Live says, take it easy. Uh, well, when someone says you get out of it what you put into it, it means that your level of results is almost directly related to your level of investment, your level of energy that you put into it, right? If you expect results up here, but you only put this amount of energy in it, and then you're angry? <laughs> it, 
<laughs> it doesn't make sense, right? If you expect these levels of, of results and you put a lot of energy, time, effort, and you kick butt, you'll probably get those results, right? All right, Ambitious 222, the more you learn, the better English speaker you will become. Yes, the more you do it, the more you talk. So what you put into it, if it is your project, the level of energy, time, effort that you put into it, wow, the chances of success go up. So, yeah, it depends on us. It depends on us. And some people might say that's, Oh, that sucks. I have a lot of responsibility. I think it's wonderful that it depends on us because we can make choices. We can improve and we can always get better. All right. Let's see. KJ 1989. I think it means you can be expert in it if you enter it. Huh? If you enter, keep going, keep pushing, keep moving forward. Even though it's uh, difficult, you got to move forward. Hatis Ersi asked, the more exposed the language, the more you learn it. Sure. And I understand this. When I was learning Spanish, I'm from the United States, and I'm from the northern part. So close to Canada, but still in the United States. There are not a lot of Spanish speakers. <laughs> I was like, ah, what do I do, right? There's small... Small, small Spanish-speaking population. So I'm thinking, okay, I would love to be able to talk directly with people, right? One-on-one. -on -one. But sometimes that doesn't always work. But what do we have? We have audiobooks in Spanish. Yes! We have newspapers in Spanish. Yes! We have a dictionary in Spanish. Yes! When you're... <laughs> Here's something I used to do when I was studying Spanish. If I was waiting in line at the cashier to, you know, I'm at the store, I need to pay for my groceries, and there's a line of people, <laughs> I would listen to the cashier or listen to the people in front of me, and in my head, I was translating what they were saying into Spanish. <laughs> so, the idea is to get your mind just constantly working on your target language. So if you're stuck in line or you're stuck in traffic, but you can hear, you can use that time. Yeah. And, oh, if you really want to improve your English or one tool, change your phone settings to English. <laughs> I changed my phone settings to Spanish, and at first I'm like, oh, whoo. <laughs> but then after that, great. It would it help me out. All right. Okay. Let's see. Let me know. Give me some apples if any of you have your phone settings in English or in the language that you're trying to learn. Show me some apples if you have your phone settings, your phone settings in English. All right, ambitious 222. In all life projects, we need use all means that make them perfectly done. All right. All right. Apples, Nina772. So if you show me apples now, that means that you have your phone settings in English to help improve your English. Ah, all right. Carissa Fella. Nina772 says, mine is in English. All right. Um, M8OA says, apples as well. And it's just a tool. And if... The nice thing about setting your phone in English is that we use our phones so much, right? So it's a guarantee that when we're reading or we need to change the options or something like that, we get it in English. And if you need to switch back to your native language to see what it means, okay, great. Then switch back to English and you automatically have the translation. All right. So it depends on us. And it's exciting because we can kick butt. All right. Okay. So uh, this is going to be the end of this live. Uh, someone asked me early in this conversation, um, how can you access my lives? And you always can do it within 24 hours on Instagram. But I'm also working to download them and put them on YouTube. And then you can access them for a long time, whenever you want.
Okay. All right. This is it for now. Today is Saturday, at least my time. So tomorrow, in about 30 hours, I'm going to go live with a lesson. I'll do one of my regular lessons. We'll do, let's see, what do we have scheduled? We have inspirational quote. We have a meme. If you remember what memes are, we're going to talk about one. And then I'll ask you guys to come on live too. And I'll show you a picture or ask you a question or get you to talk in English, okay? So if you guys come live with me tomorrow, I urge you, if because I usually ask people a question and then, or a few questions to get them talking. And then at the end, I say, you can ask me a question. So if you come live with me tomorrow, I urge you, ask a question that will help your communication, right? Because I'm an English teacher, so my grammar rules, my knowledge is pretty good. But guess what? I've been speaking English for 36 years, so I'm an expert just conversation, right? So use me for communication. That would be great. Okay. All right. All right. I'm ending right now. Thank you very much. Oh, I also have to say thank you because... If I, if there are no students, then we, the teacher is bored talking to himself. So thank you very much. And okay, I'll try to do it as many languages as I can. And, uh, here we go. Arabic is shokran. Let's see. Let's see. Shokran. BC. English. Thank you. French. Merci beaucoup. German. Uh, danke. Danke, Shane. Hindi. Uh, uh, danivad. Urdu is shukriya. Let's see, Indonesian, terimakasi, Japanese, arigato, uh, Korean, kamsahamnida, uh, Mandarin Chinese is she she, Cantonese Chinese is doche, uh, Hokkien Chinese is gamsia, Russian, spasiba, uh, Spanish, gracias, oh, Portuguese, obrigado, in sign language, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to end it right now, and you'll be able to access this video for at least 24 hours, and I will download it and stick it on YouTube. Have a wonderful day, evening, night, wherever you are. I'll see you guys.